this week we what? Why am I outside? Because we need room to move. So we're talking about Is this payback for the pie in the face? No, this isn't even close. But we <laughs> thought that it would be fun for you to do a dance challenge, like a TikTok dance challenge. So, so you're we gonna... came up with a game and the rules, and uh, it's all like ready for you. You don't even have to do anything but dance. So, so you are, are going to make me do take how many? Just mm. one? And eh, no. One, or you'll just like be getting warmed up. Yeah, warmed up. This fat boy can't dance. Okay. So have you seen this body move? It's not graceful. I think we should do at least two, maybe three. For all the gentlemen out there, I apologize that you have to see this, Gavin Mendoza. Please don't take my man card away. All right. This, was this okay. Blake's idea? No. Because I've seen Blake, Not Mia, Maddie, Riley. I've seen all of those girls trying to do this, and I'm telling you, they can't do it in like one take. Okay. Well, you're you're gonna get to watch it three times. Three times. I get yeah. to watch. You do you know how long it takes the girls to do it? Like 10 times okay. they watch it and they try to do it. I know, and they but fail. You're, you're better than them, babe. I'm not better. You I'm are. a fat kid. No, you're not. It's okay. So you're going to watch it three times. Then you'll have a chance to do it on your own. You're going to nail it. Become TikTok famous. It'll be great. I'll be married to a celebrity. Listen, I am legitimately nervous and I do not like this. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm trying to be like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. But everything in my body is like, you're stupid. <laughs> What's she doing? You're a drummer, that part should be easy. She's butt. I can't do that with my butt. Some booty. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta turn your body, though. Dance one, final result. Second challenge. I don't got a hat. This is Macarena. She butter. <laughs> ba Where's my cowboy hat? I don't have one. I can't do the dance without a cowboy hat. Get the, what's the first one? Is it the hat? No, it's upside yeah, down, upside down, flip, flip, Red shoulder, cross. shoulder. No head. Yes, do it does. All right, boys, this is their favorite song. You know that, That's right? Fast. Oh, wait. Get up, dude. They look behind them like they're looking at their butts. All right, boys, this is their favorite song. You know that, right? So if we play it good and loud, she might get up and dance again. Song number three. Ready? <laughs> can't move like that. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't move my hands. So we can be back in person with you guys, but we are so glad that you're joining us online. Absolutely, man. The last three weeks we've been going through this series called Organic, yeah. uh, as we break down what it means to have a relationship with God. The very first week it was all about being rooted in Christ, as we talked about uh, talked about Daniel and how he, even though he was put in a weird situation and in a, a situation that could go bad. 
he decided to allow his roots to be in Christ. Um, and then the last week we talked about um, thriving in Christ. Um, and, and we talked about David, how David a lot of times when he knew that, that God was faithful, but he still had to make those strides to Right, and he made a point to be transparent with God through yeah. those struggles and really like how he was feeling and how he was dealing with it and handling it. Yeah. And so he was a great example to us as far as like being real with God. Absolutely. There were so many times that he, he literally is like, God, I don't like this, right. but I, I know you're faithful and I'm going to trust you. And, and week three, this week, we're going to be talking about being planted in Christ and being planted in um, and not worrying about anything else that's going on, but truly being planted, not only by yourself, but with with the family of Christ or with other believers. Right. Um, and so let's let's jump into this uh, message called planted. So if I go to a store and I buy seeds, those seeds are not going to grow until I plant them. Yeah. And so even if I go and I buy a whole bunch of seeds for a garden. If I never put those seeds into the ground, they're never going to do what they were created to do. Now, they do have a destiny to be something. They do have the potential to do yeah. it. But if I don't ever plant them, then they can't reach their potential. Correct. And so that's what we really want to talk to you guys today about is being planted into a church, into a group where you guys are um, encouraging each yeah. other and getting deeper in your relationship with God, being transparent with other believers who are going to push you to be better, to push your relationship with God to be stronger. And so the first thing that we really want to focus on is to grow where you're planted. Um, and so yeah, uh, the very first point, like I said, grow where you're planted. And that reminds me, my dad, every year we'd go to Colorado and he wanted to climb what he calls a 14, a 14-er. 14 that's a a mountain that's like 14,000 feet above sea level, and man, we did this as a family constantly. Um, one of the things that I remember seeing is, and we, we hit on it last week, is the fact that uh, when you're climbing a mountain, it's trees, 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 it's beautiful flowers, mm -hmm. it's, and then it becomes dead. But something that, that I, I realized is the only way that there are trees and flowers on the side of a mountain uh, when, when you're doing a hike or, or a climb like that the only reason they're there is because a seed was dropped right. and, it, and it stayed exactly where it was and it became a tree. Right. Uh, if for some reason that, that seed would have been blown away or washed away, there wouldn't be a tree. It there. wouldn't have reached its potential. Yeah. And so uh, as, as we are in Christ, if we allow everything to sway us, yeah. And if we don't stay connected, then what will happen is we will blow away or we will get washed away and we won't reach the true potential that God has for us. Right. Um, there's, there's a really cool uh, place in, in Utah court. Talk, uh, talk about it. So it's actually, it's called the Trembling Giant. And we were looking it up this week and we were like amazed. So basically this group of trees grow together There's so 47,000 yeah trees and so even though when you look above the ground it looks like all these thousands and Again, thousands of trees 47,000 trees they when they studied it more they looked into the root system it's of all it one root system so all of those trees are growing and connected all through one root system yeah. and so they all have the same source for their life and yeah. a lot of times i think we but they're all different trees yeah they all have the same source but they're all different trees when they're above the ground they all look separate you know and they all are growing at different paces the same way that we yeah. can be in our christian walk like we might all be growing and that's why it's important to be around other believers maybe um, people that you can encourage through something that you've been through yeah. and then find people who have already walked through a season that you're walking through to encourage you along that path. And so all of these things, it says um, each stem above the ground is genetically identical, but each tree in its grove has its own shape and grows in its own way. At the same time, they are all one tree because they all have the same source for their life. And that's 
That's how we are as Christians. We are all growing yeah. at different paces. We are all called to do different things. God's given us all unique gifts and talents. Yeah. But we also have to remember that we all get our source of life and encouragement and peace in Christ. all from the same source. In Christ. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, the next point that we want to hit, uh, so point two, is those, those trees are connected by what they're planted in not how they look above the surface. And I know that's really loud, uh, really long, and so I want to break, break that down even smaller, uh, which is simply the trees there, it doesn't matter what they look like. It matters what's underneath the ground. Right. Uh, and so... Uh, and that kind of goes back with those roots that we were talking oh, about absolutely. that first week. Where are you getting that source of your peace and your joy and your... Um, assurance. Where are those things coming from? The way you see yourself. I love 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 18, and I'm going to read it. The body is a unit. There, uh, though it is made up of many parts, and though all the parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Man, God created you and me to be interdependent. Uh, right. Not self-dependent, but interdependent, meaning that I need you and you need me to grow. That doesn't mean that we're going to look the same. doesn't mean that we're going to act the same. Uh, it doesn't mean that like everything we do is going to be identical. identical. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, there's, there's three ways that somebody can be dependent. Um, and the very first one is to be codependent. Um, and man, best best story <laughs> is a, is a boyfriend and girlfriend above all else is is simply uh, and we've all seen those girls uh, whether it's on TV or maybe you're dating one right now um, that has to do everything with you at all time or she's going to absolutely explode and she's gonna <laughs> right now during this this quarantine she's probably breaking down and she's losing her mind. Everybody's seen the movie <laughs> or, or seen a girl that, that is so codependent on another person that they're like, oh, don't leave my <laughs> side. Uh, and that's not healthy <laughs> at all. Right. Uh, and then uh, the second one is uh, independent or self, self-dependent, which is simply everybody knows what it is. I don't need you. I got this. Right. I'm the best. I don't need to go to church to grow. I don't need. I could call out a couple of you guys right now with other believers to grow. Yeah. I I I could I could call some of you guys out right now that are uh, self dependent uh, (laughs) or independent, Um, but that that's the person that oh I don't I don't need anybody else. It's just it's just me. I got this. My walk with Jesus is all dependent on me. And what happens most of the time with that kind of person is. It fails. Yeah, and, you can't see your own blind spots. Yeah. And so that's why you have to have other believers. That's yeah. why that's not healthy. Because you've got to rub shoulders with other believers who can encourage you. So when you're down, they can pick you up. And when you're off, they can be like, hey, man, what's yeah. up? You know, so that you are kind of keeping each other in check. So and last but not least is the interdependent. Um, somebody that, that stands on their own but has a support group. Uh, has a, a small group, right. has a life group, uh, somebody that they can lean on, has a mentor, you name it, uh, somebody that that knows that their walk with God is their own, but know that they can't do it on their own. Right. It's it's somebody that just like the 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 giants and the trembling giants, like all of the those are interdependent they depend on that one life source right um, which is jesus yet forty-seven thousand trees are growing not at the same time not in the exact same way but they're right. growing together from one life source yeah and that's what it means to be interdependent is is allowing god to be number one in your life and allowing others to help support you as you make this walk with Jesus. Right, because as a believer, that's super, 
It's super important and it's super yeah. helpful to have other people around you. In Ecclesiastes 4.12, it says, The person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. They're even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And so, I mean, if you have one good friend that's keeping you in check, that's awesome. But if you have a crew... <laughs> If you have a squad of people that you all have the same common goal of knowing that you are wanting to deepen your relationship with Christ, you want to keep each other in check. Hey, how come you didn't read the Bible plan today? How can you, you know, like keeping each other in check and helping keep your priorities in yeah. line, making sure that you don't isolate yourself too much during this time and uh, just keeping each other accountable. It's important to have that in your life. And so having one, two, you know, it says even three, um, is super important because when you have other people that are backing you up, then it makes it easier for you to know that you're going to make it through the hard time. Um, so Daniel actually had some friends. And when we... I was going to tell this Bible story, and, and Pastor Gordon okay. told me I can't tell the Bible story. So let's see if you can do it as good as me. Okay. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were put in a really Shadrach, hard Meshach, spot. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No. <laughs> They were put in a really hard spot. They were in the same situation with Daniel where they were being told that they were going to have to bow down to a different, a, god. Yeah, a different god. And they said absolutely not. But these were young boys. They were They're teens. Teenagers. And um, so when you think about having to make a decision like that on your own, you might think that you would do it. You would want to think that you would do it. But when you had a group of you, it would be easier for you to stand up and make that choice. So they had three of them. And when three friends stick together, it makes it a little bit easier to stand your ground Real when quick, things are pushing against you. We all know that when three guys get together, or even two guys, and <laughs> somebody says, hey, let's go do something dumb. If it's one person, they're like, nah. If it's two people, it's like, maybe. Maybe. But if three are there... Like, they're like, yeah, we're doing this. It's going to happen. And normally they get in trouble. But in this case, that, that didn't was, happen. It was good. Yeah. yeah, they did get in trouble. They did but... get in trouble, but, man, Jesus was there to say, well, I kind of took over your Bible story. It's okay. You because can I'm better it. at you. you can... I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they did. They, they stood up to the king. Uh, the king ended up throwing them in a fire, fiery yeah. furnace. And the guards that threw them in there died. But when the king looked back in there, uh, he didn't see three three people. He saw four. Um, Jesus was standing in the midst, protecting Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because yeah. they were planted together, being interdependent on one another, yeah. but having one life source, which yeah. is Jesus. Uh, and so, when they were brought out again, they took a, a kingdom and a king that wanted to only be worshipped to making that king say, "No, we're going to worship." The one true God. Right. Um, and so being interdependent and, and willing to grow where you were planted is vital. Right. Vital to this walk with Jesus. Uh, in every season of life, like when you have that group, when you have that life, life source in every season, good or bad, you will have the strength to move forward. It, it's going to happen. Um, and if you always make sure that you're interdependent, if you always make sure that you rely on God yeah. and you have a, a backbone of others to lean on, uh, the body of Christ to lean on. Um, and God's going to bring different yeah. people into your life for that purpose in different seasons. It's not necessarily going to be the same two people your whole entire Absolutely. life. God's going to bring different people depending on the season or the walk that you're going through. Um, sometimes you might have something challenging going on and God will bring somebody that has overcome that because they've stayed rooted in his word. They've stayed connected with other believers and they've come through that valley. Like we talked about last week, if they didn't get stuck there, they came through it. And so it's important to know that sometimes those people are going to be in your life for maybe just a season, but God is going to ordain those things when you're putting him first and making sure that the people that you need around you to make it through that season are going to be there to encourage you. Absolutely. Um, before we pray, and, and we've got two two announcements that we want to make. Is this Thursday at 8 o'clock, we're going to be doing a Zoom. Uh, yeah. Just a we Zoom want to see hangout. your faces. Um, she we wants you to guys. see your faces. Uh, no, we want to just... I can we cover his hang face out. if you don't want to see it um, two days in a row. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Uh, we're just going to hang out. You guys can ask us questions. 
you guys. We want to hear what's going yeah. on. What are you doing? How are you surviving quarantine? Stuff like that. So if you want to join us, court, court will end up with your small group leader sending out some yeah. some Zoom Your Zoom information. links, we'll send it out tomorrow. Um, and so you'll get you'll get that information. Be there 8 o'clock. Man, if you want to be on for 10 minutes, be on for 10 minutes. If you want to be on... For the whole time, you can. Yeah. No, <laughs> I was about to say for an hour, but that ain't happening. <laughs> the other announcement is, man, we have been doing top that challenges this last week. Nobody did it. Nobody, which means I'm still the reigning champ at the, what, fruit by the foot uh, uh, roll-up thing. I beat Lisa, I beat you. This week's challenge, as you guys already know, is the do-it-yourself hazmat suit challenge. Man, send us some pictures in. We do have a prize yeah. that we will be uh, offering, basically, if somebody does it. If not, I guess I get the prize. <laughs> um, I'm just saying. Don't make it. I would like the prize. Um, so, again, Zoom Thursday at 8. Yep. DIY hazmat suits. Uh, the funnier probably Where is they going do. to... It's all... You guys should have it, but I'll say it again. Make your own hazmat suit. It's got to be... Man, the funnier the, the better. I'm just saying. Oh, or when are they due? due. When okay. are they due? They are due by Friday at noon. All right? Okay. We will... We will say the winner on Saturday. Uh, we will get the prize out hopefully on Monday because that's our goal. Yep. And so uh, Friday at noon, get the pictures in. You can send them to us. You can send them to uh, small group leaders. And they can send to us whatever you want to do. Get us those pictures. But without further ado, Pastor Court, pray us out. All right. Jesus, thank you so much for letting us have this time together, God. And help us to... Understand how vitally important it is, God, to be intertwined with other believers who can challenge us and keep us accountable. God, I thank you that you have ordained people in our lives for certain seasons, God, and that you are going to place the people that these students need in their lives for this season. We love you, and we thank you for everything you do for us. In your name, amen. amen. We'll see you guys tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. See you guys.